Hi, I'm Mike Ward and what we want to show you is how using a very simple income statement and balance sheet we can construct pro forma financial statements project into the next few years if you like and uh, the purpose for doing this mainly is so that we can estimate how much debt, how much funding a company needs. So what I have here is a little problem, a little case study called Champion Drugs, and uh, we've got the 19, uh, the sorry, the 2018 financial statements, and we want to look for what these things are going to look like, estimate what they're going to look like for next year, 2019. And we've made some simple assumptions. We want uh, to assume our sales are going to increase by 25% each year, that we're going to be spending 25 million in capital expenditure next year that our variable costs, our working capital, will go up at the same rate as sales, that's normal, and uh, that other costs will not change. So we, we're just making some fairly rough, crude assumptions, just as a starting point. Now, I'm going to show you some tricks in Excel as well as we do this, just to make things look a little bit better. So here's our income statement, just to show you what we're looking at over here. You can see we're making a small profit, um, and uh, at the end of last year. And here's our balance sheet. We've got some assets down here and working capital and uh, that adds up to 112 million. And here's our capital and also balances at 112 million down here. Now, let me just take out this one line here because I'm gonna put that in again just now. Now, let's, let's go to next year. So this will be equal to last year plus one just keeping it really simple. Now, 25% increase of on 100 of sales is obviously going to be 125, but we need to we would like to just set this up so that we can easily change parameters. So, we'll put it like this. First of all, I want to come down here and at the bottom of, of my spreadsheet, I'm going to put in some parameters, things that we might want to change. And I'm going to label them as we go. So, this will be our sales growth rate and uh, I type that in, I highlight this row and then it's very helpful to label this. So I'm, I'm going into this label box in, uh, in Excel here and I'm going to type, type in uh, sales uh, growth rate and uh, that's going to, um, I've spelt it a little incorrectly here, let's just correct that, sales, can't get it right, is a, whoopsie, messing that up. A L E S. If you spell it wrongly, it's fine. It'll just come up wrongly every time. So uh, we want to put that in up there. I'm using the same label as I've got down here. Now in this cell here, in the same row, I'm going to put in our growth rate of 25%. And then up here in my model, I'm going to write a formula which says it's going to be equal to what it was last year times one plus the thing called sales growth rate. I just start typing it out. Excel recognizes the name and I push tab and it copies the whole name there, close my brackets, and I've got a nice function there which, which just copies it across and picks it up from the bottom with labels. Easy for the auditors. Now my cost of goods sold is also going to grow at the same rate as sales. So I can just copy this formula down and I can just say control D. That's the quickest way of copying. And then I want to unline, underline this, and I'm just going to go um, Alt H B O to put a line at the bottom. And then I want to copy the same formula that I've got for gross profit to the right. So I'm going to press Control R, copy to the right, and you can see it's it's worked out the gross profit for me. My general selling expenses in my assumptions above. Uh, we said that those were going to stay the same. We're assuming those are fixed costs, whereas our costs of goods sold are variable costs. That's just for illustration. Now, it also mentions up above here, let me just show you, it says that um, depreciation, uh, where did I see that? Um, depreciation is not going to change. So we're going to put that in as it was last year. And for now, and just for now, we're going to assume that the interest rate is, or the interest expense is going to be the same. 
That obviously is going to change if I put more debt into this company. So I'm just putting it there for starters. And in fact, I'm going to flag it. I'm just going to put a little, uh, little star there just to let me know. I must come back and check that just now. And then I'm just going to put the little underline in there. And I can, again, here's my formula. Not very nicely laid out, but it's doing the job on the left-hand side here. And I'm going to just do Control, Control R, copy to the right. My tax at 34%, uh, I could have parameterized that, but I'm just going to copy that to the right as well. My profit after tax will be the same formula. I'm just doing Control R and my dividends paid. Now, this is a bit of a change because um, one of the things, I didn't mention it here, is that we are uh, being instructed that dividends must be 80% of profit after tax for next year. You can see last year they were actually 3 million out of 10 million, so 30%. So I want to come down to the bottom here somewhere and I'm going to write a, another parameter and I'm, I'm going to call this the dividend uh, payout ratio. And once again, I'm going to highlight the row. I'm going to name this whole row dividend payout ratio ratio like that and I'm going to put it in here as 80% and what Excel is going to do is it's going to come down this column until it finds a row labeled dividend payout ratio which is very nice so let's go back up to our uh, spreadsheet at the top here and you can see I'm going to type it in here I'm going to say this uh, our dividends paid must be equal to um, the sell above times our dividend payout ratio and I'm just tabbing that to get Excel to type it out for me. And uh, it says that's going to be 13.2. And I copy to the right my addition to retained earnings. There are some uh, decimal places in here. Um, let, let me show you what they look like. I'm pushing Shift Control and the, the number one, which gives me two decimal places. That's a nice quick shortcut for formatting. And uh, you can see my retained additions to retained earnings are 3.3 million. I'm just underlining this, Alt H B O, and uh, that makes it look a bit neater. And then these retained earnings, I need to come down here and in my balance sheet, my retained earnings will be what they were last year, plus the retained earnings that I'm going to make in the next year. And I'm just pulling that through into the capital side of my balance sheet. Now, when I get to the asset side of the balance sheet here, my gross fixed assets are going to grow by uh, 25 million because um, we are going to do some capital expenditure. So I'm putting that down here, I'm calling this CapEx. Uh, again, I'm highlighting the row and I'm going to label it up here. And then I can put in here, this time it's not a percent, it's 25 million straight. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say my gross fixed assets will be what they were last year plus CapEx, capital expenditure, press tab. And it's telling me that's 155 million. Now, my accumulated depreciation. Now, don't make the mistake here of thinking that because depreciation in the income statement is fixed, depreciation in the balance sheet will be fixed. This is not depreciation anyway. It is accumulated. Over the years, we've been accumulating our depreciation and we need to keep on doing that. So it'll be what it was last year plus the depreciation in the current year. And I can put that in, underline this, and I can just copy to the right here, control R. My net fixed assets is going to be 85 million. Now, when it comes to working capital, as you grow sales, you can expect your receivables to grow, your inventories to grow. You're probably going to need more cash in the balance sheet as well because that's like the oil in the engine. And uh, you'll, you'll, you'll have more accounts payable as well because you'll be buying more, uh, more supplies from your, um, your suppliers. So usually, and just to make it quick, we can go along here and we can type this in. We're going to say next year it'll be equal to what it was times one plus our sales growth rate. That's the parameter that we used before to grow our sales and we would expect accounts receivable to grow by that much. Now normally you can just do control D, control D, control D right the way through the working capital because all of these things are going to grow at the same rate. But 
just to trick us here, you, um, I didn't read this out, but it, it says that, um, well, I actually don't see it here, but I want to add another little uh, note to say that we are able to manage on only 5 million of cash. Uh, instead, last year we, we needed 10. Normally we'd expect to need 12.5 million if everything's equal, but we're going to tighten up on our cash management, let's say. And so I'm just overwriting this and I'm going to make that 5, just by way of example. And I'm going to underline this and then we can add this up, Control R, copy to the right. And then I can add up my net assets, copying to the right. And uh, you can see my net assets are 130 million. Now, to balance the balance sheet, we are not going to be issuing more shares. So that's going to be the same, let's assume. Uh, we're not going to be issuing more long-term debt. So I'm just making that the same. And our balancing figure is going to be the bank overdraft, our short-term debt. That's our assumption. And so I want to copy to the right now uh, my capital, if you like. This is just adding up everything that's on the capital side of the balance sheet here, my debt and my equity. And, uh, but you'll see that my balance sheet doesn't balance. Here, my assets are 130 million, but I've only got capital so far of 93. So to work out the bank overdraft, I'm going to say, let's start with the answer. We know it must be 130 million. And then we're going to subtract from this um, the sum of, uh, let's do all of those three things there, the stuff we know, if you like, and it now must balance. And you can see I've now got a nice balanced spreadsheet. And this is telling me that the, my overdraft, based on the assumptions I've made, is going to go from 22 million up to 37 million. Now, the reason we're doing this is actually to have a look and see what that overdraft ought to be. And if that were a problem for us, if the bank said, no, uh, that's going to be too high, and obviously we're doing this so we can go negotiate at the beginning of the year, what we're going to need during the year, we're not going to wait until the bank phones us and says, by the way, uh, your overdraft is out of control. It's far better to, to uh, do what we're doing, go and talk to them. So there might be some ways around that. Uh, one thing, obviously, it doesn't make sense to pay an 80% dividend. Maybe we should keep it at 30% like it was last year if we're going to need the money. And you can see that helps quite a lot. Obviously, if you're paying out 80% of your profits, it's not going to, there's not going to be enough money to grow. So we could also maybe cut back on CapEx. Maybe we only build half a machine. Uh, I'm just joking. Obviously, some CapEx is lumpy. We wouldn't be able to do that. But also, if we grow slower, notice, slower, we'll need less money because growth consumes capital. So if I, if I make this, uh, let's say, only 10%, Watch that overdraft, it's actually going to drop. If I make this 50%, just to show you, the overdraft's going to grow. Why? Because we need more working capital to uh, fund the business. So I want to put this back to 25% for now. Now, we're nearly there, but we just forgot one little thing here. At the moment, my interest expense here is hard-coded at 5 million, what it was last year. And normally, we would... Um, know what the interest rate is. And let's put an interest rate in here uh, as a parameter. Once again, I'm going to highlight the whole row and I'm going to label this interest, interest rate like that. And mm, let's assume that the interest rate is going to be 10% for now. And what, if I know that, and I know how much debt I've got, my debt is, is that and that, by the way, um, then I can come along here and I can write a formula here to work out how much interest I've got. And so I'm going to overwrite this by saying this is going to be equal to that thing I called the interest rate. Let's take the interest rate and multiply it by, um, well, let's, let's take the average of our opening and closing debt each year. So our average, I want to say, of uh, um, actually, it's not going to be quite like that. I want to put uh, that uh, plus that. That is our total debt in uh, the previous year, comma, our um, that plus 
that in the next year because and the reason I'm doing this is that the, the, if we just use these figures here we would be assuming that we're going to pay interest on the full amount the whole year but in actual fact our debt is going to grow steadily during the year and so I'm taking the average level of debt during the year and charging interest to that so that ought to work and but when you press enter Excel stops you and says you have a circular reference here that's because uh, if I press OK you'll see what's what's happening here it tells me this depends on this which drives this which is affected by that and all of these things work together how much interest you've got affects how much debt you've got and how much debt you've got affects how much interest you've got now this is not a big problem Excel can easily uh, fix this and the way to do that is to go to file options the bottom here and you'll see there's a um, an option which relates to formulas here and all we want to do is enable iterative calculation then Excel is going to work its way up slowly and um, and you'll see it's going to easily and quickly resolve our problem and it's it's settled it out and you can see it's taken our debt up a little bit and uh, and therefore um, uh, oh, sorry, our interest has gone up a bit, therefore our retained earnings are a little bit lower and um, our bank overdraft has gone up a bit. So now it's looking a bit of a mess because I've got lots of, diff, diff, uh, lots of formatting problems here. So what I should do here is just drag this all the way down to about there and then I'm pushing shift control and one that formats everything to two decimal places. And then I'm just going to get rid of the last two decimal places. And so it looks nice and neat. And then once I've done that, I can take this whole column down here, uh, including my parameters at the bottom over here. And I can click on this little button here and forecast, because I've done it for one year now, I can do two, three, say four, five, even six years. And uh, that will give me my projections going into the future. And maybe I can now play around a little bit with some of these parameters. Perhaps I'm going to increase my uh, dividend. I'd like to increase my dividend a little bit. So instead of ramping it immediately up to 80%, let's, let's just do it slowly 10% per year. And maybe my sales growth rate is going to drop a little bit. And uh, so we, we can just um, fiddle around a little bit here. Maybe it's going to stay at 10% for uh, the next couple of years. And maybe CapEx, I'm not going to spend 25 million every year. So maybe it's going to be a bit lumpy and maybe it's going to be 15 and maybe 25 and then I don't know, 20. We, we, can, we can finesse this a fair bit. Interest rates, well, we don't know what they're going to do. So we just assume that they're going to stay much the same. And then you can see I have worked out what my funding needs are going to look like or my overdraft in this instance for the next few years. And if I wanted to, I could just highlight this one row, click on it. If you press F11, you should get a graph, nicely labeled as well instantly as the bank overdraft. And uh, we should really have highlighted our years as well, just to show what we're talking about here. But that wasn't hard. And it's very useful to be able to uh, build these um, these little uh, problems, um, these forecasts into the future. And th this kind of skill is kind of bread and butter stuff uh, for financial planning uh, for, co for companies. I hope you found this useful. Thank you very much.